Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Aid Station. I'm absolutely delighted today to be joined by Taylor Host, the co founder of Miro AI, who's joining us from a log cabin somewhere in the middle of the US. Welcome, Taylor. Great to see you. Well, it's good to see you, Chris, and uh, appreciate you having me on. Wonderful. So I'd love to start by just, you know, giving you the opportunity to tell the listeners just a little bit about you, your background, your journey, how Miro AI came about, please. Well, the short and the sweet part of it is that I'm a nerd. I love sports. My co-founder, Jamie, who, you know, uh, is at a lot of your events in Asia, uh, who's based in Hong Kong. He is a huge runner. He flies all over Asia running half marathons. He runs a few full marathons times every year. And uh, he convinced me that this was the right sport to take our AI tech to. So um, back in 2017, he and I used to work together. We decided to start Miro and we were off to, uh, we were off to the races. Ha ha ha. But uh, uh, you know, long story short, we've been at it for the last three years and uh, we provide uh, AI using race photography and video. Uh, we identify athletes as well as uh, the gear that they're wearing. So we work with the brands, the sponsors, but then also um, you know, event professionals. Fantastic, and there's been some great evolution there. I think you were telling me before we came on, on air, you're working with the likes of Major League Baseball and everything, and we're sitting here with the mass participation industry completely shut down, but the reality is that every industry is shut down and people are confined to their homes. And while you might be thinking, okay, there's an opportunity in Major League Baseball. That's, that's amazing for your resume. But right now, it's the same thing. Everything's shut down, isn't it? So, Certainly. Yeah, I mean, sports, uh, in particular in the United States, uh, it's really a question mark as to whether, uh, whether or not we're going to see sports over the next couple of months. I think that uh, putting health first and putting safety first um, does make sense. It doesn't make sense for those of us in the industry's pocketbooks, but that is secondary to our team, our families. You know, uh, this is a unique time. Uh, we've never seen it before. Uh, why, um, you know, why put the economics first in this case? We still don't know how it's going to play out. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned there your, you know, your family, your team. Uh, you know, we, we were talking last week, and uh, well, I think it was a week before. I mean, you've got an amazingly, seems complex situation to me. You know, you're, your fiance is in Hong Kong. You're in a log cabin somewhere between Chicago and Detroit. You've just said, I think you mentioned your parents had joined you. And I think you said you've got a team of nine people that are spread across five countries. Tell us a little bit about that in terms of, you know, what, what's a day in the life of Taylor Host right now with this disparate business all over the world and, and the impact of COVID-19? Well, you know, I mean, we didn't need COVID-19 to uh, be working remotely. Uh, Chris, you know, our, our main base of operations has traditionally been in Hong Kong. Um, that's how we, we came into contact with you, but then also uh, really the Asia running community. And um, uh, Hong Kong has gone through the last eight, nine months of uh, political unrest um, that has caused a lot of instability in the business environment and the home environment for everybody on the team. Um, we've always been a little bit spread out. I think with the coronavirus, um, you know, we got to see the impact of it in our business very early, being in Asia. Um, Jamie, in fact, the, my co-founder, he was in Japan uh, getting ready for an event the Friday before it was the you know, Inuyama Marathon uh, that uh, we were going to be handling that week. It was one of the first events canceled. Um, so we've, we've seen this happen and roll throughout the world. Uh, obviously, me based in the United States, I, I have to meet everyone's time zone. I'm trying to be un-American. You know, Americans don't tend to come to the other people's time zone. So, um, you know, it's been odd hours, but um, uh, we thrive in front of a computer. It's where we build our software. It's where we deliver our software. And um, it hasn't been a huge change for our team specifically in terms of we're working remotely. And so, you know, you, I said five countries, those people are all pretty much in similar situations to you. They're all in lockdown. They're going through, through the, the similar challenges. Uh, definitely. I think everybody's a little bit different. You know, we have, uh, we have someone who's expecting uh, a baby on the team. So our head of engineering delivery, Wallace, she's um, now seven months pregnant. And so, you know, she's got a different lifestyle. She's, you know, got to see doctors and things like that. And she's based in Hong Kong. Uh, we work with her husband to make sure she's in a good spot. Um, but then uh, our senior data scientist, um, so an AI guy, uh, John, he's got a little baby at home. His wife's a teacher. And so they're trying to juggle the time on the computer doing their job. 
right? So she's got to teach from home, like I am talking to you right now. And so, you know, those are two family scenarios that, that you know, ultimately, family is an important part of everyone on our team's business, but, uh, or everyone on our business um, environment, but we've never had to be so close to someone's um, uh, family situation than we have now because of the uh, virus and the health system. So mm. um, it's, a, you know, it's a unique time, but we embrace that extra level of intimacy. Um, it helps to plan things as well as get to know your team better. I'm interested in that situation. Is, is there something that you've learned about yourself? So you, you shared with me, you're, you're, you're in this log cabin, you've been pretty much on your own. Your parents, I think, arrived yesterday. So you, you've, you've got, uh, you got them with you. But you know, I guess we've all got this wonderful opportunity at the moment. There's lots of challenges, no doubt about it. But I think there's also some, some amazing opportunities to learn both about ourselves and and, and our fellow workers. And is it something that, that's been this kind of light bulb that's happened to you that you've, you've learned something that you didn't realize about yourself in your, your isolation? Well, um, I have been accused of being, um, as an engineer, uh, very focused on uh, product delivery, uh, these sort of things. And, and really that sort of ethic propels a startup forward. Um, they call it shipping. That's, you know, uh, S-H-I-P. Um, uh, and, you know, shipping is important, but it is an opportunity for me to dial back into, uh, you know, I'm an HR manager, I'm a finance manager, I'm an operations manager as, as you know, as not Jamie. So Jamie is much more technical than I am. Uh, my code is not as good as his. So I have to fulfill a different role on the team right now. Um, you know, we have, uh, uh, we have, different moods throughout the team in terms of you know, uh, people's feeling about the future of um, of their work, the future of the industry we work in, um, but then also the future of everyone in their family. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And so um, it's my job to be dipping in, asking how people are doing, you know, is there something we can help with? Um, we, we owe it to our team to give them a layer of stability when everything else might seem uh, a lot less stable. Yeah, so many hats, ma managing all your own, your own challenges. Yeah, I, I, challenges. Used to, I used to, I, you know, Chris, I used to fight with HR in corporate. I was always <laughs> the guy who would just, who, who would go into HR's office and I'd say, really? No, we're getting stuff done and that's all that matters. You know, nobody needs to show up at 9 or 10 a.m. They show up when they want to show up. That's, right. that's my rule for my team. So I used to be that guy. I was not a fan of uh, my HR um, uh, assignments. Um, whereas now I am HR and I totally get it. I should call all of them up and apologize and say, ah, I didn't know what you were taking on, you know? So, um, uh, but nonetheless, it, it, it's important for me to note, um, there, there's interesting things that we get to discover about our business when we have such a, a rap, you know, a rapid disruption, a, a halt. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I can get into that, and I think we could probably talk about that toward the end here, but I think it's important to say that this is a very, very unique and difficult time for the industry yeah. and many other industries. Yeah. And so it's been changing on the week to the extent where um, I'm not addicted to the news cycle at all. I'm more so addicted to um, uh, how my team is doing on a week to week basis. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that idea that I would pivot away from um, the actual news cycle and, and be more inward focusing can yield some, some, some very positive things. We've, we've, we've learned how to prioritize a lot better would be, you know, one of the number one positive things. Mm -hmm. We looked at everything that we were doing and we said, you know what, all of this stuff, it doesn't matter. Let's focus on these eight things, right? in the team. And mm -hmm. when you have a right. board that has a hundred on it, so, I mean, you know, yeah. 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 So yeah. it does allow us to, to hone in. Um, but it, it's, it's important to note that there's still a lot of uncertainty and that is um, it's, it's, it's plaguing the entire industry. Um, service you providers, say that, I was, you know, the yeah. next thing I was going to lead to is, you know, probably w what's your biggest challenge I would love. And, you know, that's one of the things I'd love to get out of the aid station is that we're helping as many people as possible with their challenges. So, that uncertainty, I mean, if, if you were to kind of hone in, you spoke about honing in, you know, what would you say is the one single biggest challenge you um, as a co-founder of Miro AI are, are feeling like you're facing now on a daily basis? I wish I had something profound for you, Chris, but the reality is that it's capital, it's keeping the doors open, it's keeping um, uh, my team in a stable spot. 
and and you know ultimately um, uh, we're not we're not one of those Silicon Valley startups with millions of dollars at our, at our uh, you know in our bank account just waiting for a rainy day like this or or something um, you know we uh, we are a bootstrap business uh, we've taken minimal investment and we you know uh, we certainly don't see uh, investors lining up to invest in any business right now so it's 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 not an option for us to go out there and, and get some cash to weather the storm um, we need to come up with new ways to save money and uh, new ways to make money um, so uh, you know ultimately it's keeping keeping the doors open has a much different purview we cannot forecast at this point uh, reliably so um, I think something that's probably know. repeating itself right across the industry and, and many many industries you know how, how do we keep enough cash and, and not even knowing is this going to go for three months six months you know clearly there's going to be a economic recession maybe depression and we were speaking a little bit about that the other day you're a mm -hmm. you're a, you're a geek on on the numbers stuff as well and you had some amazing insights for me so you know as a business owner i'm sure that that's going to be resonating with people right across this industry and others and it doesn't surprise me that, 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 that that's one of the biggest challenges and you know one of the things i'd love to to get here is some chat when we when we put this out is you know how how can we, we help each other with ideas along those lines of okay we're all struggling for that these, these are some of the tips that i've got and something that that i've been talking about a lot is is managing creditors i think that you know a lot of inexperienced entrepreneurs in this time might be making wrong knee-jerk decisions around how they manage their creditors here and i, and I guess that's you know it, it, it's a challenge for everyone people knocking on the door and we're all in this virtuous cycle now so uh, yeah absolutely I, I i can resonate with what you're saying yeah yeah you know on the uh, uh priorities piece you need to figure out who who's eating first um you know as a founder uh, Jamie, Jamie, as well as myself, we eat last in the business. Yeah. Um, uh, we always knew that. That's why we signed up. Uh, it's part of it's part of uh, duty, but then also, um, you know, being a startup founder. Um, that said, uh, you know, we we have attempted to manage our costs. Um, uh, we've looked into our our books. Every dollar we spend with Amazon Web Services and all of these other uh, companies, we we've called them up. Uh, you know, I called up, I've never talked to Amazon and we spend a lot of money with them. And uh, I called them up and we talked and, and we got some credits. Another one would be, uh, you know, we looked at other uh, services. So we called up Microsoft as well as Google. And so, you know, we're looking at how to take our biggest cost, which is our infrastructure, and um, uh, hack that a little bit. And so, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've always We've we've always we've always run pretty lean in terms of infrastructure, but uh, now we can we can go and approach those companies who would be creditors, right? And we would say, hey, listen, it's going to be a difficult ride. We want to stick around with you. What can we do to make this a little bit easier, right? And that's um, well, you know that's a companies. really great point you make there because I think you know one of the other things I've been sharing with people is communication is key at this stage, and, and you've just just highlighted that. You picked up the phone, you spoke to a big supplier and you came with, with, with a solution. And, and, and how many people are, are, are getting scared, running away from creditors, but, but, but not communicating. And, and, and I think, you know, that's a, a fantastic example of it. I'd love to just segue across from there because you're clearly in the innovation space. I believe that one of the real positives that's going to come out of all this, and there are going to be many positives out of this pain, I, I truly believe, is, is there's going to be a whole bunch of innovation in our industry and others. And, and just quickly, is, you know, is there something that you've seen as, as an amazing innovator yourself working in the AI space? Is there something you've seen to say, wow, that's an amazing innovation that someone's created? And, and I often say that sometimes we look at our own industry for innovation, but often you can learn more about innovation from looking beyond the walls. Is there something you've seen around the traps that's really inspired you from an innovation perspective? Uh, yeah, I mean, just what leaps off the page is what, what has been done in Italy uh, with the decathlon uh, um, uh, scuba masks. So Decathlon, the, the sporting goods retailer out of France, out of yeah. Lille, um, uh, they're a partner of ours. Uh, I know that they also, uh, they have really dove in headfirst into the endurance space, so yeah. into running specifically. Um, and, uh, you know, it's great to have their presence on the scene. It feels like, feels like early Tata days, you know, how Tata is so close into the community. Um, you know, Decathlon might be there in five, 10 years. Um, uh, but Decathlon has great sporting goods equipment and some enterprising set of engineers in Italy have built uh, a, a ventilator substitute 
to help maintain critical patients, critical coronavirus pa patients in Italy. I posted a video of it on my LinkedIn. Um, I saw that. And you Amazing. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, these types of innovations in the medical space um, coming from uh, our industry are something that we we should be on the lookout for, and we should really be uh, you know promoting those partners. Wonderful. No, thanks for sharing that. That's great. F final thing, I'd love to invite you to the aid station. You got a cup of inspiration to share with anyone today? Something that's inspiring you that you've seen that's keeping you going through the dark times in that log cabin there? Uh, yes. I lived through the financial crisis. I was a consultant. Uh, I was dealing with bankruptcies. I was a young, very young guy. Um, uh, but um, almost every single person I've met during that time who uh, was facing foreclosures or bankruptcy or um, uh, laying off some of their longest held employees uh, has since bounced back and prospered in a very short amount of time. And so um, it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better, specifically in the US market here. Um, hopefully Asia is gonna be bouncing, bang, bouncing back soon. Um, uh, we see some signs of that, but the reality is this, it will come back and when it comes back, those who um, went through this storm, they're gonna have the battle scars, they're gonna have the decision-making power to uh, have much more effective businesses and um, participation within the industry. Um, it's that simple. I've, I saw it firsthand, met a lot of people who came out of the mud and, 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 and actually built, you know, built absolute sand castles out of that mud. Yeah, so, no, look, you know. I think it's, it's great advice. Um, you know, great, great advice. There's, there's absolutely no doubt that we will come out of this stronger. Taylor Host, it's been an absolute pleasure. We could talk for another hour as we often do. Uh, wonderful to connect with you. Stay safe uh, in, the, in that log cabin of yours. Sounds like you're probably in one of the best spots there are. Enjoy the weekend with your family and thanks so much for giving me your time. Wonderful to see you. Thanks, Chris. I really appreciate you having me on. Thank you.